All right. Hello and welcome to the Urban Monk. Um, Dr. Pedram Shojai here with one of my best friends, a guy I've spent a lot of time with um, last few years, and in particular last few months, um, been uh, in post-production, uh, finishing out a series called Exhausted. And um, it has a lot to do with everything going on in our lives right now, um, because energy really is the foundation of everything everything in life. And so uh, we're finally done. The baby's about to be born and I uh, get a chance to hang out and kind of talk about it with the other filmmaker, Nick Palizzi. Welcome back to the Urban Monk. Nice to see your face. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I've been here before. Maybe maybe it was on this podcast a year ago with you yeah, talking about something else, maybe more shamanic in nature, but uh, <laughs> super excited about this one. You and I have, have been working on Exhausted uh, for better part of a, a year, if not probably a little more than a year. It's been, it's been a joy to put together. And I think it's so needed right now. It's something that comes up in a lot of our conversations with other big health experts out there, um, this idea of exhaustion and fatigue. And I think now more than ever, with everything going on in the world, we need to guard our energy. Oh my goodness. You know, it's funny as I, I've told a number of people, you know, that, Hey, I'm working on this 10 part series called exhausted. And, um, I've had a few people go, Oh, well, what is that kind of like a personal development thing? Like more energy. And I'm like, yeah, that's cute. You know, like, you know, people think of it as like, okay, the opposite of exhausted is beating your chest and like, you know, running around like a, like a lunatic. Mm -hmm. And, and really, I mean, that's not, that's not the crisis we're here to solve. I mean, the, the fundamental root of so many of the problems that I saw in my clinic um, for years and years and years. Someone came in, one diagnosis, 12 diagnoses, all kinds of things wrong, chronic disease, whatever, whatever. Um, I would know within the first minute or two whether or not this person was going to even get better, um, take a while to get better or get better pretty quickly. And it was all predicated on the degree of vitality, the amount of energy I saw they had. Why? Because energy is the currency of life. And I don't mean that in a metaphysical way. And I you know, have, can have plenty of metaphysical conversations around that. But literally the power source of every cell, I mean, it's just energy coming out of your mitochondria, chuck an ATP to where it needs to go. And look, if you're living on the energetic breadline and you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and you're drinking coffee to get through your days, uh, no wonder you're not getting better, right? Because the energy required, the energy needed to heal your body, the energy needed to power your brain just isn't getting there. And that became really after doing all these series and interviewing all these people in our universes, that became uh, the missing conversation that drove Nick and I to say, man, this is this is a big topic and we need to talk about it. So we're here to just kind of, you know, free form and talk about it a bit here in uh, the context of why we did it and why it's important to you, right? As, as you know, an individual living in a crazy world right now. It's, it's so interesting when you start looking at energy levels um, and you start looking at, I mean, this is what we do a lot in alternative natural functional medicine is you start looking at the things that you took for granted um, and really shaking down your reality to figure out what maybe needs to be changed that you took as a grant, you know, something for granted that you were taught when you were younger. And when it comes to what we're doing to have more energy, or I guess the flip side of that, what we're doing to stave off fatigue or the signs of fatigue and go about our lives, it's really interesting when you look at it. Like, for example, <clears throat> we, you've, you've been around a lot of family lately. I've been around a lot of family lately. Every one of my family members every, is, is dysfunctional until they've got their third cup of coffee in their hand. Like, almost, I mean, seriously. And, it, and it's not even like, it's not even like partially functional. They don't want to talk until they've had two cups of coffee. Um, and they look at it as kind of like this, this kind of funny thing, isn't it? Oh, nope, just, I need my two cups of coffee. Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. It's like, okay, so let's just boil that down for a second. So when you wake up nine hours of sleep, let's just say you got like a beautiful night, night of sleep. It's like everything is perfect. It's beautiful with breeze coming in through the window. This is amazing night sleep. If you still wake up and you need two cups of coffee, before anyone can approach you. I mean, let's start looking there. This is very simple. Like if you need, or three cups of black tea or whatever your thing is, um, no matter how creative you want to get, you know, maybe it's cacao, you think that, that but you know, you need your cacao smoothie, it's, whatever it is, they're all stimulants. I mean, almost everybody is on something to try and compensate 
for lack of energy. And people you know who are really healthy, like true vitality, they don't need anything. They get out of bed as long as they slept well, as long as they're eating pretty well, as long as they didn't overdo it the night partying before or whatever, they are fine. They're up, you know, maybe they need a couple deep breaths and like then they walk downstairs and they're ready to roll. If you need something and look at your children, for example, children and, and indigenous cultures too, something else we do. They don't, they don't need anything in the morning. They wake up and they go. Our culture is running on Duncan. <laughs> and, and without Duncan, we're screwed. Hmm. I often, I, you know, I was joking around that, you know, if if the bad guys that wanted to get us really wanted to bring America to its knees, they would just take out the global coffee crop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one, I mean, we'd just be done, right? And like, I, I came to coffee later in life um, and uh, I was, uh, you know, a parent, right? And I didn't really see that coming. And I kind of like, you know, standing on the edge of a uh, shore and a wave just like, you know, sweeps under my legs. You're, you're like, man, plans, God laughs. And I was like, oh, oh, coffee. I, I didn't grow up around that stuff. And, you know, I, I drank a little bit when, you know, my kid was screaming and crying, you know, early days and then um, just kind of got accustomed to the ritual for a minute. And, but then I'm back in my normal swing. So I get up in the morning, I do Qigong, I like, you know, do my thing, do a little exercise. Uh, and then like my wife would put on a cup of, cu cup of coffee and I'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, that's what we do. Right. And then I'd be like, why do I, ugh, why do I feel more tired? Why do I feel messed up? And it was like, you know, why, why are you putting things on a high interest credit card when you have money in the bank? Right. It's a stupid economics. Right. And so the, the moral story is to clean up your energy economics and just be smart about how you flow your output, your your exercise. And there's so many things. I mean, we've talked like there's whole episodes on exercise and building muscle for mitochondrial health. Uh, there's whole episodes on detoxification and why if you have heavy metals and gunk in your system, your mitochondria stop functioning and you can't produce energy. So, I mean, like there's a lot of reasons why people are tired. Um, but the moral of the story is once you start fixing that, um, you don't need the stimulants. You don't need to borrow from tomorrow to get through today. And that to me is a huge part of this conversation that people are just missing is they just take for granted that, you know, like your family, they just, they yeah. need it. It's crazy. You could be living the, the healthiest lifestyle. I like, I love that you just brought up um, toxic load and potential mold toxicity. I mean, uh, who's telling me this? I think it's Dr. Roundtree, who's one of the functional, one of the many functional medicine uh, practitioners um, uh, who's in our series. It could have been, might have been Hyman, but I, one of those two. Um, they said, um, you realize that like for most, you know, mo me and most of my colleagues, 50% of our visits, the initial patient visits that we get, the primary complaint that drove them to come in is fatigue. Like that's the primary, they're like, I just don't have the, I just don't have the energy. I, just, I woke up and the energy has gone. Um, this is like near and dear to my heart. I think it's near and dear to your heart too, Pedram. Like you can be living the, the healthiest lifestyle in the world, you know, exercising, or at least what you think is the healthiest life, lifestyle in the world, exercising, getting tons of macronutrients, tons of micronutrients, getting everything that you need, supplementations there, um, everything you're, you know, you're meditating. And sometimes it's not even about that. You can wake up and all of a sudden, if you have no, if you have no energy or diminished energy over the course of like three or four days that you just notice isn't going away, that can be a primary indicator of something that is very wrong. Now, it could be something that you could easily squash with coffee. You could be like, okay, you know what? There's a, you know, I woke up, apparently I need coffee. I'm getting old. You know what happens? You know, when you turn 40, okay, I guess I'm, I'm 45 now. I guess um, now I need to start, start drinking more coffee. And you can cover up um, an underlying symptom or an underlying um, uh, disease or um, imbalance that is trying to like throw symptoms at you and be like, Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. What is it? Could it be cancer? Yes. Could it be um, toxic mold in your house? Yes. Could it be a complete imbalance of your gut? Could it be a parasite? Could it be something like that? Totally. Um, all these things, tick-borne infection. Yes. Um, all these things where your body, one of the first symptoms is uh, energy is going away. You know, it could easily be covered up by a cup of coffee, uh, three cups of tea, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of us are doing that and we don't realize that our body inside is screaming at us and we're just masking the symptoms. So, um, when you see fatigue as a functional medicine practitioner, um, or, or other integrative doctor, um, that's usually something that you do not want to ignore. You know, now you want to start drilling into that and figure out what's going on. Cause a lot of times it's not, it's not pretty.
Yeah, and, and like it's funny because it's so ubiquitous and we're surrounded by so much of it that we just assume that that's the new normal. Uh, the number one reason people go into clinics is like, you know, everyone complains of fatigue. So doctors are like, yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, what, you know, so tell me, tell me about your cough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but how did that cough manifest is the body's energy systems could not support the immunity to fight off whatever that infectious agent was, and then to go in with the right immunoglobulins and clear out the bug and clear out the inflammation and clear out the gunk that's there. And it's just like, okay, look, you know what? They they took Normandy. Let's fall back, right? And and, and that's that's really where the line gets broken. That's and you're like- <laughs> That's a good one. Oh my God. It's such a, I never thought about it like that. It is. You fall back, you fall back, and you can get stronger, but you're going to lose some stuff. You're going to lose some circulation. You're going to you're going to get some more wrinkles on your face. You're going to need, you know, to to compensate. You're going to and and maybe that's not even going to work. And you're going to become grumpier. And your life, your overall perspective and feeling of hope and excitement and inspiration is going to take a take a little bit of a hit. But yeah, we're going to protect the vital organs, but the outside you, that's going to start changing dramatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the orcs are they're, are scaling the walls, and so you just go back to the castle keep, and you're like, I, I just got, I just got to focus on work for the next two years, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna retire, and then I'm gonna fix everything, right? Hopefully, we built this door, this five. Hopefully, we built the, the door to the keep pretty, pretty sturdy because they're gonna be pounding on it now. There's no more moat. There's no more like you know. It's over. Yeah, there's no more like defenses on the mountaintops that are like trying to like you know that's all gone. Like hopefully this door and these wall and these final like you know heavy stones we've laid here are gonna you know hold for a little while. Yeah, and you just got like two guys with a coffee pot. <laughs> like that's it, and that's I mean that's kind of you know we're joking about it a little, but that's kind of the world we live in right now, and you know the the doors are getting banged on. Like, you know, there's nothing like a pandemic to wake you up to, you know, hey, um, am I healthy? Right. And as we right. look at like the kind of baseline of where your immunity functions, dude, it's energy. Yeah. Like, do you have enough available energy? It's like if you think of energy as um, like money. Right. And so you have like a defense department and they're like, uh, hey, we we need a budget. And like you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, protect our country. Here's your budget. Turns out, you know, the, the borders get defended. But if you're like, ah, yeah, um, we're kind of we're kind of short on cash. So like we could give you guns, but no bullets. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how does that how does that fund an army? How does that defend your country? And so that's what we're doing energetically with our immune system. We're just like, OK, look, you know, um, I know you've been huffing paint uh, from the new furniture that you bought. I know that, you know, you drive for two hours a day and you're like, you know, your new car smells uh, seems like a good idea. I know that you're being exposed to, you know, mold in your house. So let's just take a little bit off the top over there. Now you have, you know, six bars of stress. That's that that sucks. And that's kind of wiping out some of your energy. You, you know, had some sugar in your espresso this morning. Uh, you just keep stacking it up. And eventually you're like, dude, I barely have enough energy to like keep my eyes open to drive to work. And then I got to wear this dumb mask and like do all these things that we're all forced to do now that are, you know, a necessary component to hygiene, right? But are also stressing us out and compounding it. And so you're just like, I, I don't have enough to meet my energetic needs. If a super bug, whether it's this one or the next one lands on my life, whether it's the flu, who's more likely to get it? It's the person that's diminished in energy. Comorbidities are a big thing right now, and people are people are you know asking uh, on a lot on, in our respective communities, and also starting to ask on whole TV here, like, hey, um, how I can't I can't go to the doctor. Um, I just don't, I don't trust the doctor. Uh, my my father well, actually was I'm not not gonna share too much of his personal information here, but he needs to go to the doctor because he's got a, he's got a, an issue, and he's like, I went in there, no one's wearing masks, no everyone's next to each other, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ter if I'm sick going into this place, but I know coming out of this place is you know, my, my risk of being sick has gone up dramatically because a lot of people aren't paying attention to that. So people don't want to go to the doctor. So a lot of people are asking us, hey, how do I diagnose things on my own? Obviously, we're not saying that you should and obviously go look at, go check on the doctor before you make any major health decisions. But how do you get an idea of whether you're OK, you know, without having to sit down on the butcher paper on top of the doctor's, you know, the doctor's table and get examined, you know, um, and, you know, one of the primary, you know, indicators of a problem an underlying problem amongst a, a few other big ones but it is energy like, are you have you have you experienced a dip in energy lately mm. how is your sleep you know what i mean like things that relate to energy like those are things you know if you have if you have cancer for example 
Um, how's your appetite? Have you lost a lot of weight? How's your energy levels? Like those are those are major like um, external indicators of an underlying problem um, that people should be paying attention to now more than ever. I was just thinking, Pedram, you know, you've mentioned ATP a couple of times and you've mentioned, um, you know, the, you know, these economics, you know, and the idea of, of currency and cash. Um, can you describe to people who are listening what ATP is um, and, and how that works? I know you and I are just so immersed in this that that, that kind of a reference, that kind of a joke is hilarious to us. because we, we, Now we get it. We've been schooled by like, you know, the best people in the world. Can you explain to them what ATP is, how it works, how it, how it truly is the currency? Yeah. 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 So um, to geek out, adenosine triphosphate is the carrier molecule, if you will, of energy. But let, let's let's back up a little bit because, you know, it's to me, it's kind of uh, amazing and mystical, this thing called energy, because it's starlight. Very specifically, starlight from this closest star to us called the sun that are sending beams of energy through photons hitting this rock called planet Earth billion years ago, uh, you know, the fungus first showed up, broke down the soil, created the environment for the plant kingdom to come up. Plant kingdom, by hook or by crook or by miracle, however you want to, you know, believe it, was able to take this sunlight through leaves through a process called photosynthesis and create carbohydrate chains that then became, you know, the basis of the stalks and the roots and the trees and all this kind of stuff. And then animals came along eventually and started eating those plants and taking that energy through the plants as the middleman from the sun and being able to power and fuel their bodies and their cells. And then, you know, animals started eating other animals who had eaten plants. And then there's this whole kind of food chain thing. And I'm not going to get into, <laughs> I'm not going to get into the politics of all that, but you get energy as a form of stored sunlight one way or another, and it gets transferred between proteins and fats become a really good storage uh, vehicle for this. But again, billions of years ago, there were these blobs of cells called prokaryotic cells, which were okay at producing energy. And then there was a type of bacteria, primitive type of bacteria that somehow came inside and made a deal with the cells that existed at the time. And then there was the birth of this thing called the eukaryotic cell, which now suddenly has this bacteria inside its nucleus, which is called the mitochondria. And that suddenly became an amazing multiplier of our ability to uh, extract energy from these carbohydrate chains in particular uh, with the with uh, the addition of oxygen. It, it became this electron transport chain. And then boom, holy crap, look at all the energy coming out. And guess what happens when you get better. It's like, hey, listen, you're broke. You're living on the bread line. You're kind of making ends meet. You come home, you watch your show, you eat what you eat. You got some ramen. That's life, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden someone's like, oh, here's like $20 million. And you're like, wow, let's go see Paris. Let's hike the Grand Canyon. I need some new shoes. Life gets bigger, right? Mm -hmm. And so as this mitochondria became part of the equation, all of a sudden it's just like, hey, we're rich. And life started evolving and adapting and getting really interesting and, you know, led to, you know, these, these humans and these creatures that are, you know, stumbling around the earth uh, now making bad decisions, but that's a different show. <laughs> um, but that surplus of energy led to growth development and, you know, where we are now with the development of our prefrontal cortex and all sorts of things that help us do math and moral reasoning. Um, when that system is working well, life is abundant. The problem is, we now know, and we talk about this a lot in the series. Um, there's, a, I put a link in there, exhaustedseries.com. Um, the mitochondria are not just dumb energy producers. They have a signaling system amongst each other and amongst the vast array of other bacteria and life forms in our, what we call the microbiome in, our, in and around our gut, our organs, our skin, everything. And they're like, hey, this animal is thriving. Awesome keep going, you know, spend money, let's go, let's make more energy, this is working, or uh, this animal is slowly dying, let's start, you know, let's start, you know, clearing things off the shelves, this party's gonna be over, right? Mm -hmm. And that signaling system has a lot to do with toxicity, has a lot to do with epigenetic expression and hormetic stressors, and the signaling of the external environment to the internal environment saying, adapt, thrive, grow, kick ass, or, yeah, this one's not going to make it, right? And when you're feeling exhausted, 
I'm sorry to say this, but there is a subtle messaging going on between your mitochondria to each other and the bacteria in your body saying, Ew, I don't know, this, this, I'm, I don't know if I want to bet on this horse, right? And so that sounds grim, but you are one or two months away from having turned that all around and having all of your system back online and kicking ass. Um, and if you don't make those decisions, you've already made a decision and it's a slow chronic disease filled death. Right. And so it's just, it gets heavy and it gets really interesting. And I, I, you know, I went off on a couple tangents, but that's kind of the core of the energy system. And then ATP becomes the, the molecule that will just show up, grab the energy and then take it and be, it's like, it's like the U S dollar in the global economy. Everyone accepts it right for now. Um, but you know, and so it's like, yeah, we, we take dollars. And so ATP will show up, deliver energy. The cell gets to do what it needs to do, which is detoxification, replication, whatever that function of it, whether it's a liver cell or a brain cell or a kidney cell, they all got jobs. You can't do your job without energy. So if the energy isn't delivered and the energy isn't getting there, then none of your systems are working well. And eventually things start to collapse upon themselves and you get chronic disease and you're like, okay, they took Normandy. Let's just back, let's back up over here. It's a slow, painful, you know, kind of extraction process out of a full life. And that to me is one of the biggest crises in the modern world and something we know how to fix. We know how to fix. The speed with which it diminishes, I think is, is, probably part of what makes it so dangerous and so hard to understand so hard for a human to understand that you know whether or not they have energy or not like if it happens overnight you know you got a problem but for a lot of people this is a you know this is death by a thousand paper cuts right it's like you have like you know let's say it happens over the course of a year you slowly and but surely lose energy and if it's happening degree by degree you can give somebody a complete 180 on their health you know over 180 days one degree per day and they might not even realize it because it's just happening. So it's like the it's like the frog in the pot kind of a thing, whatever it is. Like you know, this, this just starts boiling without realizing it, and dies. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, and something that you do with your work with Urban Monk, and something that I do with my work with the Sacred Science that we're bringing together into Whole TV into this new ecosystem is this. We're just passionate about helping people heal themselves. Like first and foremost, starts right there. Like I mean, everything else happens you know, after that. So I just get really frustrated when I see people and I'm sure people who are watching this might be able to relate. Like when you see people who are, whose health is taking a turn slow, but, but, you know, steady about face in the wrong direction. Like, how do you even know that if it's happening to you, how do you, how can you sense into yourself and, and really figure out whether or not you're part, part of, you know, the, the, the group that we're talking about who really needs this. Like, is there, are there telltale signs? Yeah, I know it's easy to say, well, do I have energy today? Some people will say, yeah, my energy is great because compared to yesterday, it's not that different. But compared to last year or two years ago, five years ago, it's completely different. So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you actually sense into that, you know, and, and really get honest with yourself about where you're at? Yeah, I mean, look, it's the, the challenge is if you're looking um, laterally across your friends and peers, um, to judge your energy levels, it's a very bad indicator of where you're at because um, chronic disease, fatigue, um, and all these issues that we talk about are just everywhere, right? Yeah. So it's like you go to the office and everyone's sitting around, you know, kind of chugging on their coffee and banging on their spreadsheet and hoping the boss doesn't look, right? Like, it, it, is that your moniker, right? Because if that is, then yeah, you're, you're doing fine. You're breathing. <laughs> You know, it's great. <laughs> right. But like, okay, so there's a lot of them. Like one of the one of the top kind of canaries in the coal mine that um is an indicator that I will always look at is sex drive. Like, hey, do you constantly feel like, you know, three, four times a week? Are you wanting to make love? And in a way that, you know, is longer than, you know, the four minutes <laughs> that, that, you know, people are getting is like, do you, do you want to make love? Do you want to have sex? Does your parasympathetic nervous system, is it able to kind of go into this place where you're enjoying a healthy love life? Do you feel like exercising? Right. Like if your wife says, oh, honey, uh, did, did you grab the like socks from downstairs? Do you go like, ah, God damn, they're downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Like, is that like, you know, like a kick in the shin for you to like have to go up and down your stairs? That's a pretty good indicator. Right. And then mood, the enthusiasm and the vitality that comes with having energy is just like you see your kid and you're like, hey, good to see a sport. Let's go outside and throw a football. 
right? Versus okay. here, here's an iPad. Please shut the fuck up. Like I, I, mm-hmm. I, I uh, right? Like, and that's how a lot of people are parenting now. Yeah. Right. I mean, like these are all indicators of the available amount of energy you have to either be the good parent, the good spouse, the person who's like a caretaker of this body. Like, hey, I need to get my heart rate up for an hour every single day. Right. The F, like, what is it? The, 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 the FDA, no, the USDA says that. Right. Like, and so you're, you're sitting here thinking to yourself, yeah, 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 that sounds great. But who the hell is going and getting their heart rate up and sweating? intentionally for an hour a day and feeling like doing so. If that's not you, okay, that's where you're at. But understand that that is also a part of a healthy, robust energy system saying, yeah, let's go get it. And if you're not doing that, it's time to start looking at what the problem, and, and look, it could be hormones, uh, adrenals. Um, and, you know, people talk about adrenal fatigue and adrenal exhaustion and all that. Those are kind of some, you know, it's, it's a little complicated and they get into it a lot. Our experts get into it in the series because, you know, there's some, there's some debate over the nomenclature of all this, but the moral of the story is your adrenals are kind of like, you know, the, the, um, overdraft advance on your checking account. And yeah, you can overdraw it and it'll kind of, you know, make up for it now and again. And eventually you'll put it on a credit card or, you know, beg for a line of credit, but you don't want to run your personal home economics that way. And uh, most of us do. That's what we do with stimulants. It's what we do when we get up and we're like, oh, damn it. I just got to push through this. And, and eventually that will rob um certain other hormones. There's something called pregnenolone steel. It's kind of a baseline hormone that then feeds into the production and synthesis of other hormones. And when you start robbing Peter to pay Paul and you get pregnenolone steel, all of a sudden it might be your estrogen. It might be your testosterone. It might be your progesterone. Depends on how it manifests. But all of a sudden you're like, oh, my hormones aren't working well. Uh, My skin looks like crap. I'm tired. I have no desire for sex. These are all also indicators of a broken energy production system. And if you're not looking, it's to me, it's like, it's the thing that's been there the whole time that no one's talking about is energy is the currency of life. And when you're low in energy, none of the systems are working the way they should. And of course you're going to get chronic disease. Of course you're going to get sick. Why do you think it is I love how I'm interviewing you. I'm interviewing you now. Um, I love getting interviewed on my own show. This is the best. Why, Dr. (laughs) Shogun? Would you say (laughs) – I want answers. Oh, by the way, people are like, hey, Nick, what's in your your, uh, cup? I have raw cacao and chaga in mine. So, you know, we're not – like this this isn't Folgers, just just to be clear. (laughs) Chamomile. (laughs) <laughs> some people, some people um, uh, think that chamomile tea is like what you drink before you go to bed. But people who are, are drink a steady stream of chamomile tea um, start to understand its majesty and and the 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 psych the, the the psychological effects it can have in terms of it's a nice stimulant. It can actually give you a caffeine free boost and wake you up and just kind of get, make you more resourceful. So. Um, we don't we won't get into herbalism here yet, although herbalism is covered by some of the masters um, in the series. Um, but I was going to say, um, why is it if, uh, if people listening? Some of you guys are probably podcast junkies like we are. Why is it that um, you're only hearing about the dangers of comorbidities um, and and things that would would lead to fatigue um, uh, in the in like the pod you know the podcast um, sphere? Not really on major news networks. Um, you, you know, you might hear about it on, you know, Ben Greenfield, a friend of ours who's in the series, uh, Joe Rogan, they'll talk about it. Like, Hey, you know, you realize you need supplementation and you need other things, um, besides what they're telling you. Um, you know, but you know, the New York times, whoever your, your news source of choice, Fox news, whatever it is, you're not hearing about, Hey, watch out for your, watch out for these potential other factors that'll make you more susceptible to COVID. Like why, why is this not part of the conversation? Is there a major conspiracy or is it just ignorance? You know, they're just ignorance um, on a large scale. Man, it depends on who you ask. Um, I can tell you having been in the medical system, um, been the CEO of medical groups and kind of, you know, been around that block and been in some of these rooms that the medical system as it stands in America, at least is like a plantation system where you have this fluid filled sack that like does this thing and is born and dies. And in between you become a place where money can be extracted from you 
for every stupid little symptom you have. Mm -hmm. And so there is very little um, incentive for the human body to be robust, full of vitality, and able to intercept some of these things that are coming at us in a way that um, would offset and prevent disease. Because for every stupid little thing that comes up, there's a drug. And unfortunately, the side effects of those drugs um, oftentimes diminish our energy systems even more and open us up to being susceptible to other diseases, other chronic you know, conditions and problems. Uh, and it kind of kicks down the, down the can. One of the ones that I'll talk about, and this is mentioned in the series by our experts as well, but it's really important is... Uh, you'll see this all the time, and and you know, and people who've listened to my show for a while know that I I, I still um, kick this guy in the shins over this. Is one of my least favorite commercials ever um, was Larry the Cable Guy standing in front of some hot dog stand at like some like county fair, and he's like, you know, I used to have all sorts of digestive crap when I ate like this chili dog, and you know, I this is my favorite food, and and now and I couldn't eat it, and then I you know, I started taking this antacid, whatever it was, right. And now I could go ahead and eat like an idiot again, right? Like go, <laughs> go team, right? You know, America. And, and, and I'm sitting there going, oh my God, that is like criminal. This is right. criminal. This guy's a whore, right? And it was just, I can't believe this is the messaging because, all right, you go back in a functional medicine context of what that means is you do not have the actual acid producing capacity to break down that big chili dog or whatever the hell he was like eating. And so the stomach acid, the hydrochloric acid that is supposed to be there to break that up and dissolve that so that then the, you know, the, the juices can flow and the amylase and the protease and the lipase and everything can do what it does would then take that food, process it. I mean, assuming it's good food and move it through your system to extract nutrients and calories and all the things. But what happens is because you lack that stomach acid, it is partially broken down, it rots and it ferments, and it's fermenting with the wrong kind of gut bacteria that are now producing an acidic byproduct that is giving you heartburn. So in the infinite wisdom of this medical model, what we do is we take antacids to neutralize the acid coming from bad bacteria instead of supporting the acid production of the stomach, which would then solve the problem, which is what a good functional medicine doctor does. Why is that important in, in context to what we're talking about here is the production of HCL and stomach acid is a very high energy, metabolically uh, uh, important part of the human uh, production, right? In, in, our, in our digestion. So if your energy system isn't working well, you don't have enough cash, if you will, to produce the hydrochloric acid, to break down the stupid chili dog, to not have the dysbiosis, to not have the antacid, to not need the dumb pill, right? Mm -hmm. And it just kicks down the can. But what's the origin of all of this that's being missed in the conversations is there wasn't enough energy. Your mitochondria weren't cranking enough energy to take the protons of this hydrogen and do what they need to do to create this energy sensitive chemical that is needed all the time for the crappy diets that we eat, right? And so again, it just, it goes all the way back to the fundamentals of needing energy, but then we're taking all these drugs that de de deplete us, diminish us and take away our energy. And here we go. Here's the life that we're living, right? I think people that are people are, who are watching, listening can relate to the idea of eating something terrible for you and feeling an immediate whack to your energy. Um, you know, it, it, and talking about the production of HCL, I mean, that makes sense from, you know, it, it could be a lack of energy that leads to indigestion or the other way around where you're using so much energy to produce that, to handle the crap you're putting in your body that you don't have energy for the next thing to think clearly, to do other things. So, I mean, this, this is like a, a two way relationship and people just take it all for granted. They think, you know, you know, we grew up this way, right? I mean, in your house, you know, you, you might have grown up a little different. Um, but for me, like I grew up in an Italian um, American household where, you know, a good a good meal was, you know, pasta, pasta with like meatballs just to be totally stereotypical, some garlic bread and like an iceberg lettuce salad. Like that was that's it. And like, if I eat that now, I'm just, I'm done. Like you might as well, I might as well go to bed. Like my body's not used to it and doesn't want it anymore. Um, but back then you, you, and then you just take the, the essential nap after you eat. That's just part of the culture. It's like first we eat, then we sleep. 
You know, it's like because mm -hmm. you can't possibly walk around and be productive with that diet. So, I mean, just underlining what you said, I mean, I think we all can relate to it. Um, you know, an another thing that's interesting, just from um, earlier in this call, you were mentioning the um, the ability for us to evolve from single-celled, multi-celled organisms into more complex beings because of the availability of more energy. Because when you have more energy, you're able to, and you actually have the desire to, explore. You have the desire to push boundaries. Um, you know, I just wonder sometimes, and I'm, not, I'm really not a conspiracy theorist, but I do wonder sometimes if there, if even from, yes, we've obviously capitalized medicine. You know, we've obviously made this one of the most profitable things for an organization to focus on because there's so many sick people. So that's a problem. Um, I, I, debatable whether it's based on our own ignorance uh, or there's actually some scary, like dark force that's just like, you know, old men, you know, smoking cigars, doing all this stuff. But another side of it is if you don't have energy, to looking at looking at like, you know, the BLM movement and the Me Too movement, all these things that require energy and creativity, innovation, passion, risk taking, bravery, you know, all of that stuff. When you don't have energy, when you don't have fuel in your tank, that isn't necessarily as easy to do. It's very easy to keep a culture complacent, um, literally give them bread and circuses, Look over here, look over, no, no, it's all over here. Look over here, look over here. So they don't see the big thing that they're not looking at. Very easy when they don't have a full tank of gas. So, I mean, you know, if we want to look at it from a conspiracy perspective, I mean, it would serve a lot of people in positions of power to really keep people focused on these crappy diets and keep your focus off of what your energy should be because you're a lot easier to, to, to govern or control when you're limping along. Dude, I don't disagree with that at all. And if you use uh, glyphosate in the soil and you harm the plant's ability to produce the uh, precursors to serotonin and you block the tryptophan from getting into the food supply. So now you have people that have no energy and can't come up to their prefrontal cortex and actually think for themselves and evolve into the conscious humans that they're supposed to be, then they just become robots being told what to think, red team, blue team, vote over here, spend over here. And, I mean, just look around you. I mean, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but the more I look around me, the more this stuff starts to stink, right? Yeah. And, and it's bad, it's bad. By the way, uh, the series, a couple of people have asked, the series is called Exhausted. Go to exhaustedseries.com uh, and you can check it out. Um, Nick, you're not supposed to be touching your, your eyes or your nose during COVID times, but I could, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just reading comments. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why humanity doesn't stand a chance. Um, oh, let, let me go dip my hands in a, in a vat of Purell. <laughs> oh my God, right? And, and we've actually been, you know, having this is like, you know, we're, we're going back and forth with the school about the like, you know, come back to school plan. And it's like, wow, they're like in these little like plexiglass chambers, not being allowed to interact with other children and being herded in like cattle and herded out. I'm like, this is like, this is like concentration camp kind of shit. Like, it's just, I don't want my kids to get COVID. I get it. But it's like, wow, I don't know if socially it's going to make it even weirder having them have to interact with other children in such a way where it's all just fear. And so, I mean, we live in such a weird time. I mean, our biggest thing now is I just, I use sulfur, sulforaphane. I use tonics. I use all kinds of things. My job is to keep these kids robustly healthy and keep right. their energy systems alive so that whether it's COVID or the next thing, I just, here, here's a metaphor that we use, by the way, there's a, a whole book called exhausted that's coming out on the tail end of this series that Nick and I co-authored. Um, that it's, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Right. Really book good. This guy. Yeah. Really good book. Um, and you know, one of the examples we used is like peacetime versus wartime economy. Right. And we, um, like imagine, okay, so let's just say your country is fighting wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and you know, the wars keep going. And so you got budget, right? Energy, money, budget going out to fight these wars. And then all of a sudden it's just like, hey, uh, we need some bridges. We need some school books. Uh, what about the arts? And you're like, sorry, man, war's draining the economy. And so you're off fighting these wars and then the internal kind of domestic infrastructure starts to fall apart. Now, think about it. Your body's fighting off 
some mercury over here, some bacteria in your gut that's aberrant. There's viruses coming at you all the time. There's stress levels from like listening to the news and like the sky is falling all the time. And there's just not enough budget in, and we're not living in the parasympathetic nervous system to rest and digest so that we can repair the organs, we could detoxify, we can clear the liver, we can, the, the glymphatic system of the brain can do what it does. So you wake up and you're like enthusiastic and refreshed and ready to like, you know, take on the world. You get up and you're like, oh shit, um, honey, uh, did you grind the coffee yet? <laughs> I think this dog is hungry as if the dog isn't hungry every morning. You know what I mean? Like we're just, we're back on our heels and it sucks. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's now that you've now that you've explained ATP and how that actually works as currency. Like every organ in your body, every part of your body will accept that and does accept that because it is. It's the building block of energy, building block of life. The things that the things that happen when you now have that going to fight everything along all of the borders of your whatever the country is, um, you're going to start seeing changes in quality of life within that country. There's not going to be books mm -hmm. for the yeah, like you said. There's not going to be books for the kids in school. You know, there's not going to be entertainment. There's not going to be joy. It's just going to be like that gray life slowly dimmed. Like you, uh, you know, outside didn't get gray overnight. If it did, you would, you'd be like, oh gosh, I have to go to the doctor. Something's wrong. But slowly turning down the color, like the luminosity on your reality because of all of the battles that are being fought. And your body is, a, we know this, your body is an extremely resilient thing. Like for us to be this out of whack, we must be doing things. It must, things must be, and now we could talk about other things like you know, EMFs and like you said, news headlines um, that cut, that create stress, that create ad uh, adrenal overload, adrenal fatigue, um, you know, all the things that happen because of the reality we, we live in. And I, I forgot what the chapter in, in Exhausted is called. What's the, it's like, it's like the world's on fire. I think it might be what it's called, world on fire. I mean, we don't realize that the world, it didn't, it didn't light up overnight, like anything. This has been happening over the past, like three or four decades, more stress, more technology to see the more stress, more terrible things happening in the world, more social, you know, while we're getting closer um, as a society, there's also more social unrest because people are realizing for, you know, for the better that there's problems. So there's all kinds of things that are happening in your reality every single year. So the work, so the fire is burning hotter around you and you're responding to it um, in a more um, detrimental way, I guess, um, every single day piled on top of all the imbalances in our food and all the, all the environmental factors, like your body's being bombarded. Our, our realities are under attack and there's only so much you can put your body through before it says, okay, you know what? Wait a minute. I'm not going to die right now, but you're start, you, now we're going to start actually seeing something different. You're going to start seeing more wrinkles. You're going to start losing more hair. You're going to start you know, gaining more weight. And by the way, yeah, your energy also going to tank. I mean, we, our bodies want to be in balance. As you know, from your practice, all the things that you've done in, in clinics throughout the years, like our bodies want to be healthy. You give them the slightest little nudge in the right direction. You get, you give them a little bit of of daylight at the you know end of the tunnel, they're gonna reach for it. We're gonna go towards that. You give somebody one thing, one building block, and oftentimes it's all you need for your body. To be like yes, please more. Where where was that? Yes, I need that. Mm -hmm. And your body immediately goes back into alignment. I mean, a Cairo will tell you that. Like you know, all they're really doing is getting you out of the way, getting your psyche out of the way, getting your muscle memory out of the way of your body's innate desire to be in balance. So I mean. I think that what we're doing in Exhausted and what we do in all of all of our series and upcoming series is just giving you, it's just giving you that one thing, one thing at a time. As Dr. Tom said it in a call, a couple, um, Dr. Tom O'Brien's also in the series. He's like, I'm not asking you to hit a grand slam. I'm just trying to give you base hits. If I can give you a base hit here, yeah, maybe a couple outs, you know, but a base hit here, drive one run in here. Um, just start winning on a small level and start stacking those wins, people don't need to have a dramatic um, behavioral reversal. This is not what this is. This is about just starting to take a couple steps here and there and letting your body tell you, yeah, please. I mean, it's almost like when you don't want to work out, you, you and I do this, we work out together a lot. Sometimes, you, sometimes you're like, dude, we're going down to the gym. I'm like, no, 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 please, no. And then once we're there, you know, it's like, thank God I came here because all I needed to do is like, start for five minutes and start getting that sweat going. And I don't want to stop now. Mm -hmm. so I think all we're trying to do is give people um, just that one breadcrumb, that first breadcrumb and let their, let your body listen, let your body actually tell you, Oh God, that was really good. Episode one gave me that one thing. And you're going to get hooked. We don't want to, we don't want to be dying. No one wants to be on that slow, that long, slow road to death. We want to be living until, 
you know, we're into our 80s, 90s, or or above if you're Pedram's grandpa, like 104, right? 104 this year. And like still he, going. And he's enjoying it. This is not an ugly 104. This is like this guy's mm-hmm. still hanging out, like you know, talking and doing all the things and ha- enjoying. Maybe even God forbid having a beer every once in a while or watching like, a football game, or whatever. I mean, this is a guy who's actually living. This is what we want. Nobody wants to be dying on the vine. You give somebody that one glimpse of light. Sometimes that's all you need, you know? That's it. And this is actually a really great segue into uh, an announcement. So Nick and I decided a few months ago to join forces. Um, We're doing three series um, with uh, Hay House. Each of them have a book coming. And then we decided to do a deeper integration. And we brought all of our content together in a new platform called whole.tv which launches on the back of this thing and so we'll have all of our series we have tom o'brien's mark hyman's uh and then you know we're getting the best films that we're finding out in the market and bringing them to the platform um and it's going to have live it's going to have uh courses it's 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 going to be a pretty robust very interesting place to find help and and look, listen, energy is one part of the equation. The microbiome is one, you know, t- changing from from uh, drugs to herbal remedies is one. And we have all these different assets that we've done over the years. Um, and like so the next one, uh, we have a 10 part series on healing trauma that's coming in January. And guess what? How is that relevant to what's happening here? I can tell you right now that uh, I could help any patient really start getting their energy systems back. And there are a certain percentage of people that will immediately sabotage what we did to bring their energy back down because when their energy comes up, they feel all the discomfort and all the pain and all the trauma from their past. And they will sabotage the ascent of their life trajectory and their health because they can't deal with the, 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 the volume of pain that has been unresolved. So we did a 10-part series on that. We have a 10-part series on uh, conscious parenting and how to be a better parent in this crazy world. And it's just going and going and going because, listen, there isn't a one answer to everything, but there's a better conversation that isn't happening in mainstream media. And Nick and I have had enough, right? And so we're really pushing our chips in to develop more and more content to help support our audiences and our viewers and people who don't know us, frankly, to come in and have a safe harbor to learn what's up help yourself and then help the people around you. Because look, if you get a little bit more energy in your life, then all of a sudden you're like, hey, let me give you a hand with that. Oh, you look like you're having a bad day. I don't even notice you're having a bad day if I'm having a bad day. As a matter of fact, I'm mad at you for having a bad day because what about my day, Mm -hmm. right? And, And that's the world we live in. It's just like, dude, no one's, everyone's got an empty cup and are screaming at each other versus letting the cup overflow to be the people that, um, our families deserve, our communities deserve, and the world deserves. And so look, and, you know, we're idealists and we're, you know, trying to save the planet and everything we do at Whole TV is planting trees and cleaning up water and and helping villages and everything that, you know, we stand for. But we understand that the base unit of that is the human being that needs to feel better and have energy to be able to participate in their life again. And if you're not fully participating in your life, there's something wrong. Let's help you fix that. I love this idea of, you know, we want to change things on the world stage. I think a lot of us do. A lot of us aren't happy with what we see um, going on right now. Um, and it, it, when it really comes down to is us starting to make better distinctions about what's vamping our energy and what's giving us energy. You know, if you want, to, if you want things to change. So, yeah, Whole TV is, is about healing you and us. So that you can take the stands you want to take. I mean, it's really it's really hard to go fight a fight when you're already hurt. You know, limping into limping into a battle, you know, uh, is not a good look. You know, you're 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 not going to last very long. So, how do you heal yourself? That's basically the thought process behind whole TV. Is every aspect of your life? How do you heal yourself? And then through doing that, I think that a lot of the answers are going to come. To, to I mean, first of all, they're going to come mentally, psychologically, because you're going to have more space to kind of create them. And I think more on a relationship level, you know, nothing brings people together like healing together. There's just nothing I've seen that's like, that's quite like that. Most of the experts that you'll see in Exhausted are, they're doctors, they're badasses, they're, you know, Harvard this, MIT that, you know, whatever it is, Johns Hopkins. Um, they started on this path, uh, a lot, I'd say more than half of them because they had their own healing crisis. 
and they've known what it feels like to suffer. And nothing, I at least in my experience, brings people together, like understanding that there's been shared suffering, that we're all humans, that we're all just trying to be okay. Like everyone's trying to be okay. Everyone's trying to get their needs met. Like, you know, you, if you just start with that, you know, concept, that's kind of where we are with whole TV. Okay, everyone has needs, everyone's a good human. They just have, we have varying degrees of damage to varying aspects of our life that we need to heal. Once we do that, then the idea of coming together and starting to organize around a shared cause, a shared vision, that just happens naturally. So on a large scale, Whole TV is about changing the world. Um, on a very granular scale, it's about healing yourself and then out, outward from there. Um, I love what you said before about how some people want to do this, but they've got so many damaging um, traumas that just sabotage them every single time, every single time. There's certain types of health conditions that you can almost, you can use it um, forensically to figure out you know, um, what happened in your past. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And as you'll see in the healing trauma series, there's just some really interesting stuff, correlations between trauma, certain traumas and certain health conditions. Um, something that we talk about in Exhausted, um, in one of the episodes that's dedicated to it, and also in the book, is this idea of being able to understand relationships better, which relationships in your life are feeding your energy and therefore feeding your overall well-being, which relationships are vamping your energy. Not necessarily because the person that you're in the relationship with is an evil person. I don't personally believe in that that idea, um, but the relationship itself, the dynamic, the language being used is not benefiting you and you leave it feeling like you just got kicked in the, you know, wherever um, every single time without, without, you know, anything obviously being said to you during the discussion. You just feel like every time you interact with that person. So there's all kinds of aspects to energy um, that I think are, are fascinating and extremely powerful to bring into your life. I mean, just that one with relationships, when you start um, healing your relationships or letting go of the ones that don't serve you, like we should, you got to hear our experts talk about it. It's like, and when you try, they'll, they'll give you like little drills that you can do very quickly just to kind of feel it, dip a toe, realize how fast that can actually, you know, help you feel better throughout the day. There's just so many aspects to this energy conversation. And um, I think we really nailed it with Exhausted for sure. I'm proud of this baby. You know, we've both done a lot of films. We've done a lot of series. Um, I really, really enjoyed the process of this. It keeps getting better and better. Um, and look, it's life is complicated. It's a tangled web. And if you want to untangle it, you got to have some cash in your pocket, right? Like if you don't have energy, you can't move through the the inertia of life. And so that's one of the things that, you know, Nick and I spend a lot of time kind of mapping out, you know, content and where it needs to go. And if you don't have the baseline of energy, you just, you're a blob. You don't have what it takes to make decisions to move into the next iteration of your life. So the series, uh, right now you could go to exhaustedseries.com and register for a free screening. Uh, Whole TV, um, uh, I think September 1st, so right after this. So basically like starting, I think this this month, September, uh, August 18th, Whole TV will launch. The series will be on Whole TV. All of our new stuff is going there. All of our old stuff is going there. And there's a ton more showing up there. So um, yeah, highly recommend checking it out. And what and what we did is, you know, part of it was we're like, yo, look, this is how do we how do we make this easier for people? So just a low monthly subscription thing for the best of our content plus live plus, I mean, it's going to have live yoga every day, live cooking classes. Like there's a lot coming to it. Um, and we're just, we're here to help. We're here to support. So we've retooled our lives and our businesses to be able to support more people and support, um, you know, the media having itself kind of live there and help more people. So we're like, you know, the director's cuts and all these things are going to be there with a ton of extra resources. And we're here and we have a, a very strong community component that we've created because we really want to have a feedback loop to make sure that what we're running out and it takes us 18 months to make one of these series. I mean, this is not, this is not a small lift. So we want to make sure that we can be of maximum level of service with every one of these huge projects that we do, like kind of like flagship projects so that it helps, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people and actually starts to touch lives. And we actually have a deep integration where we're sharing our data back with our philanthropy partners to show how this type of media is actually helping people in the world. And there's just, there's a, there's a lot around it that is um, good. We have a lot of kind of 
good forces that have come together uh, and co-conspired really to start bringing this type of media to the world because enough is enough. So anyways, look, you check it out. You see it for yourself when it starts. It all starts with the Exhausted Series launch, exhaustedseries.com. Uh, check it out. Check out the trailer. Um, we're honored to be able to do this work, uh, but it wouldn't work without you and your feedback. So keep it coming. Let us know what you think. Please be there and participate. This isn't your nightly news. This isn't the bad news network. This is stuff that's like we've gone to the ivory towers to bring the information you need to get your life going with more energy today, right? It's actionable. Nick, such a pleasure. Always great to hang with you. Um, can't wait till we're right. hiking or skiing or doing something again in person. Honored to be of service, uh, right? You know, now more than ever, I think uh, we share this sentiment. Like now more than ever, the work that you and I do, the work that the healers of the world are doing, um, it's it's even that much more fulfilling. It's even that much more important. So I'm just honored to be able to uh, bring this information to all of you. Love it, love it. Well, listen, safe travels, uh, folks. We'll see you in the series. Um, let us know what you think when you're there, and um, this is just the beginning. Looking forward to.